Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. Oh. So, guys, this is the famous gym. How old are we now? A few months old, Brett? We've had the lease for since December, but. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much just got finished like this last month. Oh, let's go, guys. Wow, Brett, it looks so good. It looks amazing. You must be so proud. It's funny, it's almost like there's too many, there's too many options now. <laughs> I think too many is better than not enough. This is awesome. Oh my God, and you put the, the big bean bag in here. You can do any squat or single leg variation, but then we've got the Smith machine, the pendulum squat, oh, wow. the leg press, which we do with and without the band. Yep. The belt squat, the hack squat. It's like, damn. Yeah, it's like I'm like, oh, I, I love doing hack squats and pendulum squats. Yeah, together. The we did those my yesterday. Favorite. The leg press is my favorite. But then I'm like, mm -hmm. shit, I haven't done belt squats at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're Even set. For hip thrust, it's like, well, this is like a. a what is this? So this? This I used way back in the day. Here, watch. Get on. Okay. This I used back in like the late 90s. <laughs> It's it even has this 90s kind of feel. Well, look at this. That's a hip thrust. <laughs> yeah. It's not low back. It's hip extension. Absolutely. Well, he's hyperextending a little bit it's here. It's like but a little pulse. Yeah. Okay. So, so you've you get got in. To... Just kneel. No, that, that's all correct. So uh -huh. just get under here. And then I don't know why they, they never made this twisting, but for a lot of the legs, their feet are narrow and turned out a little bit. Okay. Like yep. And then you can hold on here or here. Some girls like. Oh, here's better. That's really good. And then just push against the pad. So you're pumping into the pad. <laughs> okay, guys. So <laughs> this is going to be such a good session. I'm so excited. Um, today, you may have noticed a couple of strangers in the background. Terry, come over here. <laughs> come over here. So this is the lovely Terry. So she is currently running the show. <laughs> she is uh, my director of operations and team manager for our coaching team. And this weekend, her and the lovely lady Monique behind the camera uh, came down, flew down um, to help set up all of our film equipment. So Terry is like a whiz at so many things. <laughs> so not only she can she manage and organize, she's also got so much experience in film and radio and podcasting and editing and video and everything, <laughs> photography. So appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> We've had, uh, I guess, a couple of days of setting things up. Yep. And getting a workflow established. Yeah, work, workflows. Make it work. Yeah. So uh, I think, Terry, you're going to power lift today, aren't you? Oh, no, no. I'm probably not doing upper body after oh. yesterday. <laughs> okay. So do you want to tell, what did, what did you do yesterday? Um, yesterday, I've been working um, on heavy reps for deadlifts because I'm coming up to a competition on May 27th. So I worked my way up to 305 and came back down. And then I just kind of did an RPE of seven on squats and did 321 and the same for bench on 321. So about 215 on squats with that and 135 on bench. So yeah. front, Thursday is kind of like my lighter day for yeah. squat and bench, but heavy mm. for deadlifts. Yeah. And then on Monday, I'm going to get assassinated. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to guess like right now, as someone, I've done a couple of powerlifting meets. So right now you're kind of, you're, you've maxed out, you've done all the hard work. Yeah. You're starting to just touch, you know, those competition style rep ranges. Yeah. And then there's going to be a nice little peaking taper period coming up here for her it's in a few weeks. Great. So, you know, at this point, like your body's feeling pretty beat up. So I'm excited for you to have that kind of rest week. And then you've got your competition. So yeah, I'm excited. It's regionals. It's a big deal for me. Yeah. And um, if this is my last competition, probably at this body weight range, and then yep. I'll go into a, my final fat loss. I don't care where I end up. It's just it's my final, final fat one. Loss. Wow, that's exciting. Where I end up is where I end up, and cool. then I may have to try to requalify for nationals again in a new weight class. Wow. Well, that's so exciting. I mean, it makes me so when I get around people that are lifting heavy, it's like exciting because everyone's like, go, yes. <laughs> it really is. I, I, for me, learning how to smell ammonia, the smelling salts oh, again, yeah. too. It's just like... <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you guys don't know what smelling salts are, okay, so it's basically ammonia, and you crack it, and you you only have to put it near to your nose, and it's like someone just went... It's like you got 
swept in the face. And, and sometimes you need that. I usually only whip it out for yeah. deadlifts. Yeah. Like or it's that last attempt on anything. Yeah. So you don't want to get used to it. Mm -mm. And actually, like before I start getting about eight weeks out, I won't touch pre workout until about eight weeks out. Yeah. That's like smart. I'm trying to not be reliant on caffeine for yeah. That way I don't, you know, like bring it back in. Yeah, bring it back in for meat day. Yeah. So while Steri recovers from her heavy stuff and does some upper body today, I'm actually going to be running you guys through one of the new programs um, that is part of the spring into summer challenge that we have all been working very hard to get out to you guys. So. Today is just one, and I have picked one of the programs that has blood flow restriction. So as we come to that exercise, I'll probably go through uh, the equipment and the accessories that I have. Uh, that way you guys know what accessories you can, you know, get and what to expect to pay for some of these things. I'll go through, you know, why it can be a useful tool. Um, and then we've got a couple of other things. I'm going to read it out so that you know what we're in for today. Hip thrust 21s, but not your traditional 21 where we're doing, you know, bottom range, top range, full range. Those burn. <laughs> they do, yeah. but for a hip thrust, it's kind of uncomfortable to do it just a bottom range. So we're going to be focusing today on the top range for two sets of seven and then full range for seven. We also have uh, some new exercises that I haven't programmed ever before, which is a lateral step up on the Smith machine. So this is, this is new for me. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that you guys stay in, like engaged and excited and motivated by having something new to, to push yourselves through. We've got our hamstring curl blood flow restriction. Ooh, I'm not excited by that. Your legs are going to be small by the time we finish. Uh, we've got some wide grip inverted rows um, instead of pull-ups. So we're going to show a couple of variations of those. Some dead bug dumbbell floor press. Now I've done dumbbell floor press with and also barbells, but I've never done with my feet up. <laughs> so this is really fun. I'm going to show you some marching uh, dead bug floor presses as well. And then we've got a single arm cable front raise. So a little bit of shoulders. And then we're going to finish off with uh, some Roman chairs if we have it here. So some kind of core. But essentially this program that I'm going through is Fancy Methods. It's one of the advanced training programs in the slewy of uh, new programs that are coming out with the Spring into Summer Challenge. So lots of, of cool, lots of fancy techniques just for fun, um, which I hope that you guys can implement into your own programs. So let's stop talking and let's get lifting. All right. Let's do it, girl. <laughs> there are so many different versions of hip thrusts in this gym. Um, and they're all great in their own way. Um, they might isolate a slightly different area, whether it's a little bit more of the distal, some more proximal, some more medial, and it really depends on your levers. So for me, I have a really long spine. It's funny, so a couple of my guy mates, if I sit next to them, my spine is as long as them, yet they're several feet <laughs> taller than me. I also have really long femurs, or probably appropriately portioned femurs for my spine, but then I have really short tip fib. So what that means is where there is like a foot plate involved, usually someone with my leg length would actually have slightly longer um, tip fib. So my feet would be positioned like this and I might be able to get a nice 90 degree bend. For me, it's probably more like, I don't know, a 75 degree bend because I don't have that extra inch or two to kind of get my feet where they're meant to be. So I'm all down for experimenting with different movements and I know what I'm trying to target so I'll play around with different equipment until I feel it working where I want it to work. And often that means moving my heels in, moving my heels out, playing with the seat position, forwards and back. Like you've got to be willing to experiment and not feel like a knob when you're in the gym <laughs> when you do that. Because what's the point of training if it's not targeting the muscle group that you're intending it to? So I've done this before. So I'm going to jump in here and we're going to do our 21s on this piece of hammer strength equipment. All right, I'm just going to take maybe three warm-up sets here. And one of the things you're going to notice is that I'm really limiting the amount of movement in my upper thoracic in my T-spine. So notice I'm not showing my, throwing my T-spine back. I'm keeping it very stuck in this position. Okay, so... If I was to move back, I'm basically keeping my glute not tense, if that makes sense. Like I'm trying to get it into maximum flexion and by moving my upper body, I'm, I'm actually influencing the length of my glute muscle. So I'm gonna keep it kind of 
facing that way <laughs> and thinking about curling my tailbone under and keeping my chin tucked. And I can't tell you how many people, and I, I'm never gonna like be the person that goes up to someone in a gym and is like, change your technique. But I, I see people all the time thrusting to the roof and I'm like, no! <laughs> so that's kind of what we're gonna be doing today. Alrighty, so I'll probably just do two or three reps here to see how this weight feels. Again, every machine is a little bit different, um, which is also why it's beneficial to train in the same gym all the time, <laughs> so that you can actually track your progress. But uh, we'll see how this feels. I want to try and train at maybe an RPE eight and a half today, so nothing to failure, because I've got a long uh, flight coming up this afternoon, <laughs> which I don't want to be sore for. <sighs> All right, so that's actually going to be my working weight. <laughs> that's pretty tough. Maybe my glutes are fatigued this week. I don't know, I've done a lot of it. So to demonstrate without the weight, as I was saying earlier, we've got 21s. So usually a 21 um, means that there are three distinct, um, I guess, ranges of motion. We've got like partial reps in the bottom range or in the shortened position. We've got partial reps in the lengthened position where the muscles stretch. Uh, and then full range reps. Today we're just going to focus on that shortened position. So we're going to come up and only go halfway back down. So it's kind of a calves bridge. So we're going to do seven reps in this position. And again, I'm really focusing tucking under, chin forwards. Notice I've got a fairly wide stance. That's really comfortable for me. And that's where I feel my glutes working. I've got clients that I've trained with and friends they're a lot more narrow because that's where they feel it. So again, don't be afraid to play around with the position. For me, it's wide, toes out for most of us, uh, and that will help me eliminate the use of my hamstrings. So after the seven reps in the partial range, top range, we're gonna do full, all the way down. And again, I'm not rolling back up. I'm staying in that fixed position, but I'm just coming down, turning the tailbone under. We don't wanna hyperextend. You don't want to come up too high. Uh, then it starts to load your lower back. We're not here for that. <laughs> Sorry. Just until you get a good contraction. I guess I've got to start. <laughs> Ooh. So we're the first people in here, obviously, this morning. It is so muggy. <laughs> so he had it set at 73, and I'm like, I'm just going to take that down to 69 for a little bit. <laughs> get it cool in here. It's so warm. Uh, the first session that we had, there was no air conditioning. And they had the doors wide open because they were bringing in and out equipment. So I nearly threw up. Um, if you guys have done my programs, you probably know the uh, glute-focused hyperextensions with the bands around the, under the arms and you hold the weight and you come up. So I did my first drop set of that to 15 reps. Here in the heat, windows open, no air conditioning. Guys, I nearly threw up. I went and sat down somewhere over here. <laughs> He's like, are you okay? I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> All right, wish me luck. This may be too heavy. Okay, top range. <laughs> Full range. <laughs> okay, back to top range. Seven, two, over there smiling as I'm like <laughs> you warming up are you warming up oh cool what are you starting with nice how's the temperature I just I cranked it down yeah uh -huh. pelvic movement so, do you want to show the folks what we're talking about? Yeah, I'll go grab a lighter dumbbell for that. Yeah, let's go do it. So, 
Terry is just talking about, so she had a couple of, I guess, pelvic rotation issues. And you guys are probably familiar with the bird dog. So I'll get down and show that while she's getting a dumbbell. So you're on the floor in this quadruped position and you're basically bracing your core and extending out long. We're not hyperextending, just that neutral position. So this is really a great core activation exercise that I used to do quite a bit when I was learning to train my core in deadlift and squat. Terry has been, I guess she's gotten stronger at that exercise and now she's progressed to like the next step. So you wanna show people what? I'll show you what I was doing. So you can see here Terry's right leg is probably going back, extending straight back. Pretty neutral. Her other leg on the other hand, I can see from the other side, it was kind of sticking out. And that probably indicates there's a little bit of weakness in one side of the glute. It could be that she's tight through her ITBs, but this particular exercise would be a really great addition to like a warm up if you're gonna be doing an upper body session. Um, and maybe you're incorporating some kind of compound movement like a, a bench press. Great for your stability. Like you have to brace your core to extend your leg. Like the, the moment arm is so far away. Yeah, so she's keeping those hips straight. Yeah. I know that this is going to happen, but you really got to work on what am I doing here? Right? Yeah. How am I getting here? Yeah. Am I squeezing here? Yeah. To keep those hips straight. Mm -hmm. So there you go. You got another little cue from us. Totally improv. Good one. Yeah, I like that. I really like that. I haven't done that exercise personally, only the, the bird dogs. And then I've done it the banded way. So that's cool. I like it. And now my glutes have recovered. <laughs> you know, guys, I was totally procrastinating. <laughs> Top range. Lord. <laughs> oh, I think I went straight to like an RPE 9 today, guys. It's so, I think it's cool that the same movement can feel so different on so many different machines. So, I think one of the things that I guess I have learned over the years training at so many different gyms. I've certainly become a lot more familiar with, I guess, that mind-muscle connection. And I know now when an exercise is doing what it's meant to do and when it's not, or when it's maybe using too much of my lower back, or I can feel myself using my hamstrings, um, or I'm having to use my whole body, or it just doesn't feel mechanically right. So. If you've been working really hard in the gym, for instance, for a while, but perhaps you're not getting the results that you would have thought, and you've paid attention to all the variables that kind of go into that, sleep, nutrition, lifestyle, consistency, et cetera, et cetera, it may be, I'm not saying it's always the case, but exercise selection it is really important. And some machines just suck. Like, I, I can't tell you the number of times I've been like, did someone sit on this machine before they sold it? because it's, it's appropriate for like 2% of the population, like the six foot seven people. So, yeah, that's my gripe. <laughs> Machines often suck. Just check out the sweat, guys. Is there, have I got like the moustache? Get in real close there, Vinny. This is sig signature holly, and I have a beautiful little mole in there as well, but I don't sweat from anywhere else but my kneecaps and, and here. It's great. <laughs> Oh, I have one more set.
be nasty. They're nasty. Lateral lunge, we're gonna use, oh, actually it's a step up. We're basically gonna start with our foot on the bench. Make sure that you unrack and keep your hands back in that position. And we're gonna step up until we completely extend tall. And you're gonna come back down to the ground. If you are brand new, I don't mind if you use this as like a resting point between reps. So again, brand new, you're not as strong in that single leg position. Coming up tall, coming back down, rest. Now, if you've been lifting for a little while and you have developed a bit more strength, I would expect that when you come down, it's a really light touch. This is really just to reposition your hips if they've gotten out of position on the descent. So I'm gonna go find another bench. Now in the program, it says, I think it says three by 10, could be three by 12. Usually for single legs, I only do 10. Otherwise you're here all day. Oh God, yeah, I don't know what to do with it. It's gonna be 10 on each side. I didn't unrack. <laughs> so this is what we're doing. We'll start with the 12. And be tense. I don't know how I feel about this. This is the only, I think I would just use this for hip thrust, ladies, gents. If I catch you with putting a, a pad to protect your shoulders, I'm gonna come growl at you. <laughs> the only time I, I would say actually use, use them is if you're doing anything that's on your collarbones. So either like a front squat or some machines like that, the hack squat, it just sits in a really uncomfortable position. I actually put my knee sleeves over the, like, like a sock to protect my collarbone a little bit, but we don't need it for this. So like I said, we're just stepping up tall, coming down. Now, if I look side on in the mirror, so you can see here when I come down, I'm not actually at a 90 degree bend. So I'm going to take this box up a little bit higher. Yeah, so that's better. You can see now that my femur is at 90. Oh yeah. So again, just lightly tapping down. This is really light, so I'm just going to do a warm up here. Switch sides. And what I really like about this is it's super smooth. Um, unlike a, a dumbbell or a regular barbell, where you're in control of that movement path. This does it for you. So it really isolates. So good if you want that, and also great for beginners, because there's just less stabilizing required. As you get more advanced, I haven't actually done a, a barbell step up for a long time, but that would be like the next natural progression to make it more challenging, because now you're in control of that entire movement. There's nothing keeping it stable. So one thing that I'm really trying to focus on here, because it's easy to relax, <laughs> is when I push up, I'm trying to keep my spine neutral, and I'm trying to stay in that forward leaning position. So you would have seen me in one of our last videos when I was doing kettlebell step ups. So here, I'm really having to push out through my stomach to stay in that position, and that's gonna protect my spine, bracing my core. Now I've lost count of my reps. <laughs> Nine. Whew. That's a bit harder. If I just leave the sweat on my lip right now, I'm sure it's just going to drop into my mouth. <laughs> I think I'm only going to go up five. That was a, a good weight. So guys, Brett actually has all of his own equipment. So. If you are somebody that wants to have a home set up, um, Brett has lots of different accessories, gym gadgets um, for small spaces. I know I've got uh, a hamstring roller um, that he concocted. So it's obviously a lot more expensive to buy a seated machine hamstring curl or a prone hamstring curl. So if you want to be able to do those at home, it's basically four wheels, 
on two beams, two beams this way, and this one's got like a little foot placement, and you're basically laying on the floor like you would do a hamstring curl with the Swiss ball, but you're using this roller and it's a lot smoother. So that's one of my favorite gadgets that he has, but you can always head over and grab his things from the website, <laughs> which I'll link in the notes. So that you can stay in the center of the bar, even if you're a little bit off center here, um, it kind of loads pretty evenly, but I can almost feel the bar because I was too far over. It is starting to pull me that way a bit, so recenter. Before somebody else takes you out of the frame, put your name to shame, cover up your face. You can't run the race, the pace is too fast, you just won't last. Forfeit the game before somebody else takes you out of the frame. Put your name to shame, cover up your face. You can't run the race, the pace is too fast, you just won't last. Do you like to think you're never... I think when I'm working hard, I need like the music to match my struggle level. <laughs> so if I've got like you know you have your favorite songs, but it's like a love song or it's, just, it's beautiful. There's not a chance on this world I could listen to that while I'm training. Artists. This is Ava. No. And I, my mum used to have uh, ladies' nights. We always had, I think, even when I got to being like a young adult, like 16, 17, 18, we'd have Club Baxter. But mum would end up taking over the music. She's good with music. But I remember she'd just be there, you know, doing her step claps with her Farrah Fawcett hair and the mic. <laughs> okay, up next. We have blood flow restriction. <laughs> so BFR has been around for such a long time. Uh, it has many uses across many different fields. Medical field, I guess, muscle sarcopenia and aging. I guess there is so many practical uses for blood flow restriction. So I'm gonna first show you what it is and then we'll talk about, I guess, how it works and then I also want to point out how this might compare to just other exercises or training techniques, because there's so many. You know, if we look at some of the strategies that I employ, we've got partial range of motion, we've got pulse reps, we've got isometric reps, we've got pause, like there's so many different variations. This is another way uh, that we can, I guess, increase time under tension, but this in particular, we're occluding at the uh, I guess proximal uh, side of the muscle that we're trying to work. So distal, proximal, we've got hamstrings are being targeted today. I've also got this program set up to do the same thing with your quads. So we're occluding venous return. And what that's going to do is actually cause, I guess the accumulation of metabolic byproducts inside your muscle tissue. And when enough accumulation, uh, I guess of those metabolic byproducts takes place inside the cell, we start to switch on you know, muscle protein synthesis. So the more fatigue that takes place in that cell, we're starting to signal grow, grow, grow. So we can do that through heavy loads. We can do it through moderate loads at moderate rep ranges. We can do it at high loads with, uh, sorry, light loads at high rep ranges, as long as we're working close to failure. So this is another way of doing that, but it kind of speeds up that process. So if you are short on time and you don't, unlike today, I'm probably short on time and shouldn't be <laughs> taking my time showing you all these things, but here we go. So we're going to just do one set. Um, we're including here at the top of the thigh, pretty tight. We're gonna do 30 reps to begin with. Um, and you're gonna choose a weight that you can do probably 15 reps at an RPE seven-ish. Uh, I went about 10% lower than what I use for uh, my normal hamstring curl for 15 reps. 
So for me, that was the other day, I think it was like 100 pounds and I went down to 90. So that was my first set of 30. <laughs> uh, and then you're going to wait for 30 seconds and then you're going to perform another 15 reps. You're going to wait for another 30 seconds and you're going to perform another 15 reps. And then one more set. So you're going to do three sets under blood flow restriction after that 30 set, initial set. So once you've done that, you're pretty done. You're going to feel a lot of pain, <laughs> which is normal. Um, but we're basically speeding up that time to fatigue. So whereas you might normally have to do three or four sets uh, or wait until like the set, uh, rep number 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, where it actually starts to you know, switch on and you know, fatigue those muscle cells, this happens a lot faster because there's less, uh, I guess, uh, those metabolic byproducts are not leaving that cell. So I have a random brand, because I didn't have any. I used to use knee wraps, and you can use knee wraps. Um, but the brand is Walter. I think these were like $29. Um, you want to make sure that you've got something that's probably two inches or more thick. If you're a bigger person, larger muscles, you may need a three inch thick um, band. Uh, but you don't want anything that's too thin, otherwise you'll have to pull it too tight and it will be really painful, to be honest. So two and a half inches is probably the, lo the lowest. Spin this the other way. Sam made a really great point. <laughs> We've seen crazy people do crazy things. You want this tight enough to restrict your blood flow, but we're not trying to cut it off. Um, there are actually a couple of brands that, uh, I guess first will uh, measure your blood pressure, and then it's a certain percentage of your blood pressure that it will inflate to automatically, like they're buttons. So I've got those, I'm not gonna use them today because they're only for our arms, the bands are too small. Um, but they are actually a really good tool too. I might link the, uh, the website for, for those products in the description. All right, I have no idea what weight we're going to do here. So I'll get Sam on the timer. So I'm actually going to take that down just a little bit. Two. So I'm about halfway. 19, yep. 20. Oh my lord. That's already torture. I'm actually going to take that down because I know I'm not going to be able to do 15 reps. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I am not going to be walking for a day or two. Oh. You notice I'm trying not to arch my back. I'm trying to make my hamstrings do that work. Oh, my Lord. <sighs> Mike, what am I going to? <laughs> I know, that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm cheating. So when, you, when you contract the muscle, it creates pressure, which pushes the venous blood up out. So yeah. if you stay in the machine, it's going to be even more painful. Which I don't want to do. <laughs> but you should. <sighs> Oh, save me, Jesus. Oh, 
Come on, Holly. Focus. Holly is so fatigued. There's my range of motion. Ah, yeah, this is it. Oh my word. <laughs> One set, that's all you need. I mean, you could try for a second, but my hamstrings are roasted right now. I wish you could feel the backs of my thighs. It's like, and when you uh, do these for your quads, so it's the same principle, 30 reps, 15, 15, 15. I walked around for the rest of that session and I looked like I was flexing my quad the whole time. Are you quite sore? They're not sore, they're but they're, they're, they're definitely ret retaining water. Brett, what was the last time you did blood flow restriction on your legs? <laughs> you want to have a go? <laughs> well, you're not a fan of not walking? 15 seconds. <laughs> God, I haven't done this in years. I think... Yeah, yeah. Five seconds. Four. Three. Yeah, two. One. Yep. 30 second rest. Yep. I think the last time I programmed these would have been like 2012. And I, I did them for... I had the medical tourniquets for my biceps. And I think I just got to the point where I was like, this is so painful. When I know I can do something else over here that's just heavy and hard. <laughs> nice work, Sam. Five, ooh, four, three, two, off you go, last one. Nice, Sam, come on. All the way up. So if you can feel your, your back starting to arch, I want you to think about repositioning, like tucking that tailbone back under and resetting. And it may mean that you're only able to do half reps, then you are done. But we, we want to avoid arching the back because now you're not actually using your hamstrings. You're using your erectors. Get them out! <laughs> over the seated? Seated. Um, I would actually prefer to use the seated from a muscle hypertrophy standpoint, just from the perspective that you're already in a, I guess, a hip flexed position. So if I sit down like this, I've already got stretch in my hamstrings. So this, for me, it's, it allows me to take full range of motion. So I believe there are a handful of studies that actually do show, like for the same amount of work, that this actually leads to better results. It's more specific. The prone hamstring curl, you're in that opened, nice lengthened position. So you're not able to get as much tension on your hamstrings. It still does, but it's not as much as being in the seated. But the reason I chose to do the prone curls today with the BFR is because it's more comfortable. Right. And that, I can't so, be doing that. Right, no, it would be really, it would be almost be impossible to do it on the seated machine for so many reasons. What it actually does is it, it takes this machine that is less superior for hamstrings and it makes it superior and some. <laughs> so it occludes all of the, like everything that's meant to be occluded and it really roasts your hemis. Yep, so it should start off feeling pretty comfortable and then it's going to progressively get more and more sickening as that metabolic byproduct accumulates inside your muscle. Which is the same thing, honestly, as like, you know when you train to failure for like a set of 20, I don't know, something really gross, like leg extension. So that same feeling where you've got, um, I guess, those metabolites burning, it's like build up of hydrogen ions, they can't escape um, because there's so much blood flow and restriction. Um, just from your muscle pumping and working hard, it's the same thing. So we're basically just accelerating that process. And again, I just want to re-emphasize, nice work, Terry. Um, you can grow muscle through this method. This causes fatigue. Yeah, and then, yes, yeah, so we've got to set you for 30 seconds. Oh my God, I'm taking the way down. <laughs>
you can also stimulate or signal muscle protein synthesis through heavy load. So that, you know, heavy set of three signals your muscle to grow through that mechanical load. So there are a multitude of ways to target your muscles in that way, but they're targeting slightly different muscle fibers. So there's two types, well there's actually three, probably four if I looked at the literature, but there's type one and type two that these are targeting. Yep, off you go, 15 reps. Two, three, four, five. Good, all the way in. Six, eight, nice work. Nine, 10, 11, 12, good. 13, two more. Good, and rest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love blood flow restriction. I used it in physical therapy when I've been getting over injuries. And that yep. way you can still get a good workout in, yep. right? Without having to feel like yeah. you're doing too much. Yeah, I mean, I had a, a bit of a back issue a few years ago. Um, and I, for probably six to six to eight weeks, I wasn't squatting. Like, no, like nothing was loading my three seconds, two, one, off you go. So I couldn't load my spine. Another 15 reps. Yeah. Um, so I did a bunch of leg extension. Like I just did leg extension, hamstring curls, leg extension, hamstring curls, all blood flow restricted. Um, and I was able to get you know, a good workout and I still maintained my muscle mass despite not being able to lift anything heavy and especially nothing on my, on my spine. So yeah, what are you up to? 12. Oh, come on, a few more. Drive it in. Good, one more, come on, come on. Two more. You got it. All right, 30 seconds. Okay, last set coming up. I mean, I had um, five months of physical therapy for slap tear, but we were able to avoid surgery mm. and strengthen the muscles around, and a big part of that was blood flow restriction. restriction. Yeah. Yeah. So for the upper body, you don't have to have these specialty bones. Um, you got 10 seconds, by the way, Terry. Uh, I just ordered on Amazon a medical tourniquet, and they come in like a pack of five, pretty colors. It's great, girls. You won't lose them in your bags because they're so brightly colored. Off you go. Last 15 reps. Uh, and the same thing. You just put it up nice and tight around the underarm, pull it until it restricts, not cuts it off. Same process for bicep curls, triceps, dips, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, people like variety. Yeah, I know, and that's half the thing. I think, I've, like, when you've been lifting for so long, you, it's not that necessarily this is something that's better for you. It's just you are so bored of doing the same things, <laughs> unless you get new toys, and we're not all Brett and have thousands of <laughs> different pieces of equipment. Well, people forget that you can slow down things too, right? And yeah. play with tempo. Tempo, absolutely, and rep ranges, partials, pauses, isometric, all that stuff. Yeah, like pause squats, those are fun. <laughs> yeah, or slow to like three seconds. Yeah, pause, pause, <laughs> pause I mean, deadlifts. When I was training clients, we played with a lot of that until the form was locked in, Yeah. even on just machines. Yeah, absolutely. So this was the uh, air bands that I was referring to before. So if you want to kind of zoom in on this, um, these are the ones that have an app. So you basically download the app, um, you tighten around your arm. So same, same kind of process as what we just did with our legs. Um, and once it's locked in, you press the button and it will inflate until it kind of gets to your blood, like until your blood is completely occluded. Is that how that, that works? It goes all the way yeah. to your maximum blood pressure, basically. Yeah. And similar, then, to, similar to systolic blood pressure. Right. You'll find the pressure it takes to cut off blood flow. Yeah. So once it's found the pressure that cuts off your blood flow, it will slowly deflate and then it will take you to about 60%. I think you can pick. Yeah, we so do 40, 50. 40, 50, 60, uh, in that, within that range, uh, and then it will inflate it for you so that you don't have to guess the, um, the pressure because you don't want to do it to the point where it's completely occluded, and I've, I've seen that happen, and it's, <laughs> those people don't fare so well, unfortunately, and it's extremely painful if you do it the wrong way. Uh, what's this one? This is a manual. Ooh. Oh, you want to wow. pump my arm up? Huh? This is almost like a... Um, so this it's like a blood pressure cuff, yeah. It's like a blood pressure cuff, except yeah. it's... Um, a five centimeter cup. So in the arm, you want a five centimeter cup or something small because you don't want to cover up the, the muscle body. Um, if you get large cuffs in the upper body, there's one study that suggests you might limit growth underneath the cuff. So this is actually what's used in a lot of the research are these Hokanson cuffs. And I just keep this in my gym bag because I can 
inflate it to a low pressure and be part. Now, is this something that you just get on Amazon? Like, where do you guys get these? Because um, I want these people to be able to train the same way we are, but this is this, all specialty, so. This is from a medical company, so these aren't designed for BFR, but if you look on Amazon, um, they make cuffs that are inflatable with a hand pump. Um, and, you know, you could do the same thing these do. You could inflate it till your pulse disappears, and then you know what your occlusion pressure is, and then you could inflate it to 40% of that. Um, it's a lot like blood pressure measurements. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, this one, you have to keep connected to the hose, so it's a little bit frustrating. So when I do triceps, I'll have it on my arm, and I'll, I'll be doing like a tricep push down by a hold the, the cuff. And so it's a single, you do a single arm? Yeah. Right. Okay, so, so I guess if we're looking at this from a practicality standpoint, I see these are really good in the research because you probably are standing there like holding it for your client or the participant while they're doing their curls or whatever. Mm -hmm. So would you say, you know, these are probably more better, practical and better, then... more practical. Yeah. And then a company smart cuff makes one like this that I really, really like. Yep. Uh, the cuffs are really cool. So we'll actually grab all of those links uh, for you and we'll pop it in the description. Uh, they range in price. I think the most expensive is probably 50 bucks, the cheapest ones, and these are even for the lower body. Uh, like I said earlier, these were about $25, $30 um, off Amazon. So you're going to need these if you do the fancy methods. <laughs> Next one is a wide grip inverted row. So I would probably look to use a Smith machine for this exercise. Um, if you are a beginner, you probably want to start with your feet down and at a relatively high chest height. And if you are more experienced, we can actually start to take that barbell down a little bit lower so that you're almost coming up like vertical. Um, and you can also choose to elevate your feet. So we'll do these over here. Like I said, probably right around chest height for beginners. If you're still working on developing your upper body strength, you're going to just come slightly forward. You can either tee off your feet here for stability so you don't slide around. So that's the back foot into the tee. The front foot stays forwards. And you're pulling out wide. And then if you are more advanced, you can come all the way down. <laughs> and you're getting basically underneath in this position. And you're coming up here. And then to make that even harder, Here's this box that I prepared earlier. <laughs> you're going to bring your feet up. And you're coming up. Ooh. My bad. Like so. So I'm really trying to push my chest out. If you do bent knees or straight knees, it really is up to you and what feels most comfortable. So for me, let me try this with straight legs. Uh, it's pretty hard. I think that knees bent is a little bit easier. Yeah, knees bent, easier. Straight legs, much more challenging. Whoop. The higher up you come, the easier it is. Sorry, that is the next exercise. So Sam is very strong in the upper body and he's actually a former gymnast. <laughs> so he could probably walk around on his hands through this whole gym and do back flips and push-ups into a handstand, <laughs> all kinds of things. So this is actually probably too easy for you. Would you, would you do this exercise as somebody that's that strong? Oh, I still like it, yeah. yeah. but you don't have to like it. This is, come on, where I'm the transparent person on social media, I don't like, I, you wouldn't do this? Probably not. Right, there you go. So probably we're gonna move into like a pull-up for somebody that's more advanced. We just, I just wanna show some exercise uh, diversity because we all get bored and we want to do something new. And I, honestly, I found that really challenging, especially if I wasn't using my grips. It was quite tough on my forearms, so like, that might be something that I want to work on. So I'm going to do my set here. Yeah, that's still really hard, guys. <laughs> so she has, she's like not letting her butt dip down or anything. Do a shitty rep. Oh, do, do a shitty rep. rep so we show people what not to do. Yeah, so she's like hyperextending her spine there. Yeah, we want to try and keep nice and flat. Yeah. 
Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so you will have done many uh, floor presses with me before. You might have done dumbbell floor presses, barbell floor presses, uh, halting floor presses where your legs are completely out straight. Today we're going to do a dead bug, and then I'm going to show you the next level of difficulty, which is a marching dead bug floor press. So. <laughs> I'm going to pull these up onto your knees, keep it in close, you're going to rock back, stretch up, but we're going to keep our feet off the floor. So this is a, just a dead bug position if you ever see, or if you see this uh, listed anywhere. We come down, pressing through. So this is your traditional dead bug floor press. And now we're going to add a march. This makes it significantly more difficult. Coming down, coming through, coming down, coming through. So start really slow, down, through. Now, Terry was doing something earlier with the bird dog with a single leg extending out the back and the dumbbell row. This is another one of those exercises that is just generally really challenging for everything. So. That is your dead bug floor press, folks, and the marching version if you want to make it more challenging. Down. Yeah, other one out. Bring it back in. Yep, and that's a good tempo. Like, you don't need to rush these. If anything, it's just creating more time under tension. And I'd probably tell Sam to bring his feet up a little bit so that they're more at a 90 degree bend. So his heels are up and flexed. Yep. I put the end on. <laughs> So yeah, there's a lot, an element of coordination required for this movement, but moreover, it's an anti-rotational exercise. So it's great for your core, great for your coordination. I think anyone that wants to live a long time and have balance, stability, flexibility, keeping your mind connected, these types of movements are excellent. And they're also really obviously great for chest and your triceps. And because we're doing a floor press and you don't get that full range of motion where you get more recruiting of your chest, you actually are required to use your tricep a lot more in a floor press. So I was sore the first time I did these after a little while um, for that reason. <laughs> So much attention <laughs> All right, so we have uh, two more exercises. We have a single arm uh, cable front raise. You can use most cables for something like this. Um, there are going to be some of the larger, uh, what's the name of those? I'm gonna describe it for you. It's the big type of cable system and the lightest weight may actually be too heavy for a single arm exercise, for females at least. Probably some males as well. So this on the other hand, it's a smaller machine. It does go to a lighter weight. So we've got this all the way down to three kilograms is like one of the lower settings here. I just did a quick set and that felt pretty comfortable. So I'm gonna take it up to 4.5 kilograms or 10 pounds. You don't need a handle for this. I like to just grab the ball before the carabiner. And let's go this side for you. I usually do a bit of a staggered stance just to stabilize a little bit. Long spine, core in dragging up and I'm also thinking about suppressing my shoulder blades down before I start that movement. So we're not like, like this. <laughs> Suppress your shoulders straight down, tummy in. And you only need to come up just to around head height. 
with a slight bend in that elbow. Now, if you've got any elbow injuries, shoulder injuries, please don't do this exercise or at least start on a really light weight. Staggered stance, core in, shoulders back, straight through. So you can also do this with a two arm, easy bar in the center. So imagine I've got like a small handle, one of the ones that rotates, and you can do a front raise like this as well. But you want to get nice and close to that uh, cable tower so that it's not uh, grinding your bits. That's never something that you want to do. So no grinding bits here. We uh, perform exercises correctly. <laughs> Pro tip. If somebody does not have a Roman chair, like the circumstance we are facing right now, um, I'm looking for a bench. I was thinking maybe like a leg, a leg lower might work. Oh yeah, this will work. Okay, so just coming up to a V position. And that, you can see I'm shaking here. This is hard. So just up to where it feels comfortable into that flex position. You're gonna come down. To make it harder, you would hold, hold, hold. I want single legs, like, oh yeah, this is tough to. So you can do flutters, scissor kicks, um, but ultimately that whole time, you really want to focus on pushing your spine into that bench. And the only way you can do that is make yourself look pregnant, push out into your space, like that's how you're going to create the most amount of tension uh, in your core. And damn, you need it for this exercise. <laughs> okay, so three sets of 15, I think it is. Pause. This is incredibly difficult. Got folks. We can do crunches here. So you're gonna grab your little mat. You're gonna pop it probably you know, four feet away from the cable tower. You're gonna pick a decently challenging weight. You're gonna go up to 40. We've got the handles here. You can use a rope. I personally like to use the straight or the easy bar but the one that's on the roller so that your wrists can move as the cable moves. I've got really, I don't know, like weak wrists and it seems to uh, cause a lot of pain when I don't use something that moves with the, the shape of my, my bones. So you're gonna come down to that kneeling position. We've done these before. I like to stay in like a vertical position and we're just tucking you don't need to hyperextend all the way up. That's not doing anything for your spine, I mean, through your core. Just do neutral, tuck, neutral. Tuck all the way under, neutral. And notice I'm not shifting back. I'm not moving my weight around. I'm just keeping that fixed position there at my hip and I'm tucking. And a good cue might be to actually think about driving your elbows into the floor. So as I come down, I push, and I can feel my core contracting when I do that, and breathe out. Inhale on the uh, ascent, exhale on the descent. All right, so that's my last exercise. Alrighty guys, so that was today's workout. It was pretty short and sweet actually, um, but very effective. And I have, for this last training program, I've brought down the number of exercises because I want you to try and experiment with these new uh, pieces of equipment. Um, and also, I guess we just need to thank Brett for letting us experiment with his equipment because there is so much stuff here. But while I've got him, and I don't want to keep him too long, I've actually never had Brett on my channel. So Maybe real quick, just before we wrap up today, tell us a little bit about like how you found yourself here in Fort Lauderdale and your background. I think um, every time I came and visited here, there'd be like four people that come up to me in the gym, like powerhouse, and they'd be like, oh my God, yep. I'm a big fan. 
<laughs> and I feel like other places they don't recognize me as much. So it's like, so it's like this is the place. place. So, yeah, they care about glutes here. <laughs> but yeah, for those of you who don't know me, I'm known as the glute guy. So I specialize in building glutes and I got my PhD. I'm, I'm most well known for inventing the barbell hip thrust. But when I invented it years ago, no one said anything. Now everyone's like, oh, I was doing that in 2000. I'm like, <laughs> so in 2009, when it became popular, you never spoke up. <laughs> I was doing that in 2000. I'm like, so you were doing it. So when I when I popularized in 2009, that's when I started writing about it. Yeah, I think we should actually, I mean, we have the capacity, I think now, especially with the, the number of people that you're getting in and that like live locally. I still think it would be fantastic to bring people in and let's actually do some like muscle thickness testing in this gym. Okay. It's, just we, we can that we fun. can do that. So it's I think we, we need a chat. <laughs> an ultrasound with glute max is hard to do. It's hard to see. Brett, I really want to have everybody go and check out all of your stuff uh, before we finish up today. So if people want to go and purchase equipment, because I was telling the guys before, you've got your own weight plates, you've got all of the glute, uh, I guess, stuff, the gear. Where can we find your stuff? So that's just my, my line of equipment is BC Strength. BC stands for my name, Brett Contreras. Um, so I never thought about selling the company. I shouldn't have named it after myself. It's busy. Just stick with busy. Yeah. <laughs> BC Strength. Uh, you just type in a search. You'll go to bcstrength.com. And yeah, we sell a lot of the, you know, like for home gyms, like mm -hmm. if you want a hip thruster, we have the best. Yeah. The original. Um, and then lots of things like the T-Bell and yes. blocks and um box squats and bands and mm -hmm. kickback stuff things like that yeah and what about instagram where can we find you at brett Contreras one there's one t in brett i think if you type in the glute guy i come up i'm not sure but it's brett Contreras one yeah that's, <laughs> that's where i'm I, it's the only social media i really do i don't do facebook twitter youtube yeah me too tiktok <laughs> Well, thank you so much for having us in your gym today. I, I love it. It is so cool to kind of see how it's all come together. Um, if I were you, I would be proud. I'm proud for you because it's just come so far. And I think, yeah, you, you're killing it. So yeah, thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. thank you.